All right, then. We need to uh, call the special meeting of town council to a close. So I move that we do so, Mr. Mayor. Seconded by Councillor Simono. All those in favor, then? Carried. Thank you. Confirmatory bylaw. Councillor Zant. I'm still uh, trying to make ends meet here. Be it resolved that the City of Clarence and Rockland adopt a bylaw 2016 70, being confirmed to a bylaw for the regular meeting of Town Council held on the 19th of December 2016. Seconded by Councillor Simon. All those in favor? Kang. Thank you then. So, special meeting is called to a close at. Uh, 8.25 p.m. Let's call the next meeting open. Open at 8.25 or 8.10, should I say. Are we ready, ma'am? Let's go on to the agenda. I move that the agenda be adopted as presented, seconded by Councillor Zant. Yes. Any additions or changes? I'd like to uh, uh, propose a change. I'd like to remove the CID-related resolution. Which number is that? Um, in our agenda. That's item uh, 9.4, Mr. Mayor. I see. To municipal Affairs and Housing. I have issues with the wording there. So we're going to push it back to the next meeting. All right. Well, thank you very much. Anything else? Any other changes? Councillor Lelande? I'd like to present a notice of motion uh, that I'd like to distribute uh, to members of council. That could be formally presented under petitions and correspondence, I believe. Yes. That deals with the uh, corner store in uh, Clarence Creek. Yes. Fine. All right, then. Any other additions or changes, modifications? That's it. All right. All those in favor, then. Yes. Carried. Declarations of conflicts of interest, none. Fine. No delegations. Petitions and correspondence. Letter received from the Clarence Creek Lions Club. Oh, that was removed, uh, Mr. Mayor. All right. Letter received from the Parois Saint Trinité requesting to grant a building permit free of charge. I um, I had occasion to read. The uh, letter, of course, we're dealing here with a heritage building that's located uh, within the city of Clarence and Rockland because there's not all that much we can do in this regard. I believe we can do at least, we can play uh, a certain role in helping them with their building uh, permit, still preserving the heritage uh, aspect of things. Well, you're talking about the heritage uh, angle of things, yes. Otherwise, I was going to recommend my employer to start up a religion of myself because I have about 280 some thousand dollars of pending building permits on Cardinal Street. We could have started up a resolution, uh, res religion. This being said, well, no further comments on this. Any other comments, reasonable comments to be made at this table? <clears throat> Very good then. Are you in agreement to go ahead and honor the request stemming from this letter? Oh, do we need a letter? Well, yes, we can come up with a resolution at the next regular meeting of town council. That's right. Well, fine then. Fine. We wanted also to uh, pinpoint a date um, uh, for a meeting with Mrs. Collier. We need to come up with a date that would allow us to uh, to draw up a road map for next year with town council, either the second week in January, well, maybe during the course of the first meeting of February, well, I'm meeting with different directors on the 19th to do the work plan, so on the first meeting of February, you'll have the work map. That's what you're talking about? Well, maybe establish a meeting after the director's meeting, Mrs. Collier. So, if there are extra things that the council wants added to the agenda, it can be discussed then. I think we're discussing two different things here, Mr. Mayor. Well, that's right. I'm dealing with the roadmap concerning the revitalization of Laurier Street. No, Mrs. Collier. No, what we're looking at, uh, Mr. Zant and the rest of council are looking at, well, we've come to an agreement where we would like to set up a roadmap for next year, uh, Mrs. Collier. 
between yourself and town council, let's say uh, we set goals and objectives, and whatever, you see. That's why we would like to meet with you at one point in time. It's not to discuss, of course, the work plan. I appreciate, uh, you know, this is completely different. You know, we don't have a meeting until the 23rd of January, so we might, uh, you know, do this during the first part of January, maybe the second week of January. When we're back, there, we have a date we can set for that purpose. Yeah, I, d I don't have a calendar with me, but we can pinpoint a date. Uh, we're not meeting on the 9th of January? No, the 23rd. That was the old one. Well, why don't we meet on the 9th? No, no, I'll be in Florida then. Could be in February. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just alluding to the January 23rd meeting. Well, Councillor Simoneau shall not be in attendance. We have established this ourselves. Well, you're able to do things without my being here. Well, that's why I stated, uh, Mr. Mayor, during the course of the first quarter of next year, yeah, we could set up a meeting then. Oh, I'm free on the 9th. Yes. So the second week might be feasible. The second, uh, let's say the second Monday of January might be feasible for everyone. But the first official meeting is to be held on the 23rd. The 9th uh, is to be looked upon, let's say, as a special meeting, a meeting involving town council and Mrs. Collier. 7 o'clock, uh, folks? 7 p.m.? Yeah, 7 p.m. is fine. All right, so 9th of January, 7 p.m. Would someone care to come up with a resolution to that effect? Are you on holidays, uh, Mrs. Collier, on that particular date? No? Fine. In any event, there's nothing set in stone, you know, as far as this goes. Would it not? Uh, I was just going to say, how how can we suggest a roadmap? When we roadmap when we haven't sat down to determine what the roadmap will be? Well, we're dealing with a list of goals that we'd like to achieve. I see. Well, I think that. We could enter into a discussion with our chief administrative officer, uh, you know, involving town council and herself. Let's just uh, come up with an idea of what we wish to be done, and then we can enter into formal discussions as to that later. Let's go on now to the notice of motion. To the notice of motion. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Ledon, with your notice of motion, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the uh, corner store located at the corner of Clarence Creek has made a request to the province of Ontario to obtain a liquor permit to allow it to sell beer and wine. Now, you and I had sent a letter in support of this request, and what I'm seeking from town council is a motion to support this request, to support Mr. Marcil in... Uh, and um, his endeavors to obtain an alcohol permit. Well, I consulted with Mr. Marcel two weeks ago and made him aware that there is some paperwork that he has not yet completed. I spoke about this with Mr. Grant Crack, and I told Mr. Marcel to hurry things up. Mr. Grant, uh, Mr. Crack told me to uh, <coughs> make him aware when all the paperwork will be prepared. And uh, I was told that uh, the approval process might take a while. If you'll allow this comment uh, on my behalf, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, every town has an LCBO permit issued, so there should be no problem. Well, I know, I know. But of course, you know, uh, the Clarence Creek residents go to Rockland, but the LCBO in Beaujet is, uh, is located under a corner store. We're not going to offer a great variety of uh, spirits and wine. It's, it's a small variety, and it's going to improve his chances, this gentleman's chances of remaining open. Really, that's the only business, that's the only corner store we have uh, in this village that's still operational. Uh, Mr. Marcel has invested a lot of money, a great deal of money in this particular business. As town, as a members of town council, that's the least we can do to help him out. Councillor Zant, yes, I'd like to say that we have to differentiate uh, corner stores' needs. 
you know, and the LCBO, an LCBO run establishment, an LCBO run establishment is government run, of course, but still I support what Mr. Uh, this resolution. So we'll draft a resolution and we'll uh, discuss it uh, officially at the next meeting. Fine, let's go on now to the question period. Does anyone in attendance have any questions of town council? Your name and your address, please. Yes, my name is Mr. Uh, Novak, 170 Le Micartier, Ward 1. Uh, uh, my question is in three parts, but I'm con I know the time constraints. Uh, so I might send the rest of my questions by way of email now. Firstly, can you please justify the increase of fees of uh, toddlers in between 21 and 107 percent, that increase? What, uh, knowing that uh, in the August uh, meeting, we confirmed that the toddler services is the service that's most expensive. And part two, why during the course of the presentation to town council during the meeting of 8th of August, are you talking about increases in percentages? Two to four percent, but for extracurricular activities in AM and PM, option two, we only indicate a new fees. Is it that your wish was not to reveal that those new fees contained increases in between 21 and 107 percent? And what uh, mechanisms did you implement to reduce operational costs or operating costs to ask parents that would alleviate parents' burden to pay for? additional costs, knowing that in August, Mr. Kehoe had indicated that the invoicing service was not all that efficient. How did you address this worrisome situation, and how was that reflected in the new 2007-2017 budget? Sir, do you have any answers as to this? Well, I believe that uh, I addressed all of those points beforehand, but I did not address those points directly with the gentleman. Uh, here tonight. Now, we've opted for option two. I made you aware of all of the rates involved, and uh, the budget that was adopted was the view of uh, making things financially feasible for everyone. And Town Council opted for the approval of option two at the time in which we entered into budgetary talks. Councillor Zant, well, firstly, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to thank Mr. Novak, Novak, yes, Mr. Novak, for his uh, question. Town Council members are uh, cognizant of my position with regard to this. Of course, it stands to reason that uh, the, our town representative uh, is in a very difficult uh, position because he has to maintain a uh, balance between the needs and the costs. And if we are to increase, however, rates, they should be raised uniformly throughout all services, but not just for one section of services offered. We should not penalize those making use of toddler-related services in the AM or the PM, as opposed to others. The increase should be feasible and fairly applied uniformly throughout all services. Well, I believe that we've received grants from the United Counties of Prescott Russell to alleviate the, uh, the daycare center's uh, financial burdens. There's a lot of money that we've received grant-wise to keep these uh, programs operational. It would cost us much more if we hadn't received grants from the United Counties of Prescott and Russell Councillor Levan, I believe, Mr. Mayor, that we'd uh, uh, compared our figures with those of other daycare centers, along with services that we're offering, uh, given all age groups involved. And I still believe that we are under the asking prices of other uh, daycare centers. Councillor Lalonde, well, a part of the, I'd like to answer part of the questions raised by Mr. Nowak. We might try to look within uh, services offered to try to reap savings. Now, during the course of discussions we had with Mr. Boucher, if you'll recall, there were over and above 88% of expenditures that were related solely to salaries for daycare employees. So it's very, we're very restricted with regards to other expenditures that could be called upon to be cut by us. Now that's in answer to a part of your question. Although you'd raised another also, you'd raised another issue whereby we hadn't pegged any percentages for other categories. Now, when we performed the most recent budgetary revision, we 
pinpointed percentages because, of course, we were tackling a new category. It was hard to make a comparison as to what was pre-existing because we were not comparing uh, equal numbers. Now, Mr. Boucher has stated, though, that the service that is offered by the City of Clarence and Crom Rockland is semi-comparable to all those other services offered elsewhere. We're not working on the same conditions imposed in other municipalities as those imposed in those the municipality of Clarence and Rockland. Of course, we those that we hire are certified individuals, working certified individuals. Now, we're talking about 48 employees. We're not only talking about the part-time employees. And those particular employees, uh, well, the majority of those employees that work in daycare services are unionized also. Let's not forget this also, that some daycare centers would have closed if the city of Clemson and Rockland would not have taken them under their wing. I believe that the school-related daycare center would have closed its doors. Uh, had it not fallen under the uh, town of Clarence and Rockland's uh, tutelage, if you wish. Now, we had no choice. At the end of the year, we did incur a deficit, and we have to come up with means to at least not reap any benefits from our operations, but at least not reap any losses either. Now, to and further to Mr. Lalonde's comments, let's not forget that 88% of all of our expenditures are salary related. Is it really the responsibility of the AMPM group, of the group that pays more for services, to pay for all of the, the encumbrances brought about by salaries? What I'm saying is that the costs imposed be transferred equally at all levels, levels to make sure that not one specific level is subject to a 100% increase. Of course, if we take a look at services offered or, you know, garbage pickup, you know, for example, garbage pickup services that, uh, you know, uh, contemplate a 50% increase. Well, you see, the problem is that the ratio of children changes along with different categories. Well, we can't say that the AM and PM categories cost more than the toddler category costs. That's Therein lies the increase. But the toddler cost is not as high as the Ottawa toddler-based costs. That's the only thing that this gentleman wants and the other citizens want is to have a fair and balanced increase. I, would, I stated that I was going to bring a report to town council during the course of the next budgetary costs that deal with toddlers and extracurricular events or activities. Now, there are only 140 uh, children that receive regular services. The others are toddlers or those that receive AM or PM services. Now, if we obtain, uh, try to obtain more money f to cater to the needs of toddlers, then we need to resort to sizable increases. I'd, again, I just like that all increases be spread out equally. But you see, you don't have the same amount of youngsters in individual categories. Mr. Lalonde, uh, Mr. Boucher, the administrative cost for this particular group is higher than other groups, is it? No, it's not. Well, I believe that what's happening is this, is that those rates that he's alluded to have increased by 102, 69, and 45%. And these rates are applicable to 31 out of 800 clients that we cater to. Now, the other rate that increases from $12.40 to $15, that represents 21% worth of increase. That applies to 154 clients that we deal with. Well, those for those 31 clients, that's quite a difference, isn't it? 
How much money was are we talking about, uh, Mr. Boucher? It well, it, it's, it's, it's a sizable difference. However, when we took over the daycare that was run by the school three years ago, you know, we were contending with two rates: a rate in the morning and a rate for afternoon services. Now, when we took over the daycare about three years ago, the day-to-day -day operations. We had three options to offer, those who brought their toddlers in the morning, those who brought their toddlers in the afternoon. Now the county-based services offer five options, or did offer five options. What? Eight, actually, eight uh, invoicing options. Now if we take a look at what we did three years ago, we only had five invoicing options with the same rates prevalent with regards to morning and afternoon services. I'm not reinventing the wheel here. Yes, but the rates did increase. And the amount of employees uh, has also increased. Now, you can't compare what was done beforehand. Of course, we're contending with the same system, but the costs are not the same anymore. I understand. But you see, the fact remains, sir, that for 31 clients or 31 individuals, they're facing a doubling of their daycare costs. But I can tell you that we should not be held hostage. We, this information was disseminated to those people in the month of October. We gave them months to come up with an alternatives. So if the parents were not in agreement with what town council decided upon, they could have appealed. But we gave them the option. We didn't tell them this is what it's going to be. We gave them the option. They didn't come up with any alternatives. But you see services offered by this daycare would have ended if we would not have taken this particular uh, daycare under our wing. But Mr. Nowak did not, does not address his comments to this particular daycare. But Mr. Zant, we received grants from the United Counties of Prescott Russell to have all of those daycares run smoothly. And things would go run along much or, or would would be rougher if we did not receive any grants. And even then, compared to other services offered through daycare services, are, well, uh, comparables were not applicable to AM and PM services, only for day-long services. On the document we were handed on the 17th of October, uh, other daycare services were looked into. Well, but the toddler costs are higher. Well, the toddler costs are higher, but the number of hours is not the same. But the number of hours or the programming is not the same. The programming offered to toddlers is not offered and the same rate. You're saying that in the morning, there are only 2.3 hours offered? Well, if at St. Trinité, it's 2 o'clock, it's up to two o'clock. Well, if you if you hire a babysitter, it's going to cost you ten dollars or something, twenty dollars at least. Well, a three-child family is not going to cost us the same. And you're in the process now of uh, oppressing francophone minority here in Ontario, uh, sir. Uh, let's just stop this right here. That we're not going to get into linguistic battles here. That has no bearing in what we're talking uh, here tonight. Don't please change the subject here tonight. You stated that 31 citizens were talking about a minority. It doesn't impact things all that much. The only option is to pay the increase or just go out the door. That's the only option you offered, citizens. And that's a city-offered services. Well, this is your choice, sir. If you don't like the price of a car, then your choice is to purchase another car elsewhere. The thing is that we offer a service, sir. And we have to offer services at a price that is equal to those prices offered. And we're not talking about $15 for 2.5 hours. It's for prior and after. Now we're talking about $15 before and after. In any event, at, at this point in time, if you take both options, it's $20. If you only take one option, it's $15, either AM or PM. Well, the parents share for extracurricular supervision is quite high but it's just fine though to increase all others if we compare this by some 15 or 20 dollars well i'm not in agreement 
because only 154 children uh, make use of these particular services you're alluding to. The rest, 376 children, make use of all of the other services offered at a reduced rate. Have any other individuals complained? You issued a notice in October? Well, Mr. Mayor, I believe that the matter that I has been raised is appropriate. I've received four or five complaints, and I believe four or five clients have uh, have uh, taken up services in January. Well, I thank you for having broached this situation. And instead of taking logical decisions, you're waiting that citizens complain vehemently about the situation. Well, sir, we have to take into account that if no other individuals come up to town council to tell us that they're not content with what we've decided, then we have to rely on what our director has stated to us. So you believe that this increase is justified? Sir, it has been adopted at the very latest round of budgetary talks. It has been approved. That's all I can tell you. Fine. We'll follow up on that. That's for sure, Mr. Mayor. Well, thank you then. Any other individuals that wish to address town council? That's it then? Fine. United Counties of Prescott Russell report, as you're all aware, uh, Mr. Gary Barton, who is mayor of the Champlain Township, has been uh, named as the new warden, has been appointed as the new warden of the United Counties of Prescott Russell. Let's go on now to committee reports. Item 9.5, 9.1, modification to zoning bylaw for the 2203 Lafayette Street property. The Committee of the Hall recommended to Town Council that it approves the Zoning Bylaw Amendment uh, 2016-10 to change the zoning category for both properties described as being 2203 Lafayette Street and Lot 19, Concession 5, Part 3, Plan 50R, 5251, from density RV1 to Village Density RV1, Exception 24, as recommended by the Infrastructure and Land Planning Committee. Seconded by Councillor Grimaud. Any questions? All those in favor, then carried. Thank you. Let's go on to the next item, the Zoning Bylaw Amendment for 2822 Maison Road. I believe that's been rejected, has it not? Well, that the Committee of the Whole recommend that Council approve the application to amend Zoning Bylaw 2016-10 in order to change the zoning category to the property uh, located at 2822 Maison Neves Road from General Agriculture AG Zone to General Agriculture Exception 20, AG 20, as recommended by the Planning Committee. Seconded by Councillor Lalonde. All those in favor, carry them. Thank you. Request for a free rental at the Jamat Lalonde Arena. Whereas the municipality received a request from the Mental Health uh, so the Canadian Association for free rental of the Jamat Lalonde Arena for an activity to be held on the 20th of January 2017, be it resolved that the Committee of the Whole recommend to Town Council that it recommend the use of Jamat Lalonde Arena free of charge as recommended for that particular date and for that particular event. Seconded by Councillor Lalonde. All those in favor? Questions? Seconded by Councillor Lalonde. Fine. Thank you. Item 9.5. Hiring strategy. Oh, no. We're still. Yes. We, uh, hiring strategy for Director of Infrastructure and Planning. Committee of the Hall recommend that. Recommends that Town Council proceed the in the following fashion to hire a strategy for director infrastructure and planning to complete a revision of salary to post the available post and recruit and recommend candidates for the position of director in infrastructure and planning and for to proceed to interviews to hire a competent individual councilor lalonde mr mayor if we are to publish this post, it should be published in the Municipal Works publication. Oh, Municipal World, I'm sorry, uh, magazine or publication. Similar uh, 
requests for petitions to be filled are published. I thought you dealt with uh, publicizing the position. Yes. You're not running a publicity to recruit a recruiter for that position, but to recruit potential candidates. That's right. If it is to be published in the Municipal World, a magazine or publication, that's, well, I believe that uh, that would reap dividends. To obtain an individual that is able to perform necessary research in some of those files that the City of Clarence and Rockland is called upon to contend with uh, is not an easy tax task. Mrs. Madeleine Charlebois had been one of those. Now, the Municipal World publication is that publication that is received by all town councillors throughout Ontario, and those people working at the in public works also receives this publication. Councillor Lalonde, I believe that, you know, we need a headhunter, a recruiter at this point in time, Mr. Mayor. We tried on two occasions in the past to do so and didn't, didn't yield any uh, tangible results. I believe that we should start up with this process as quickly as possible and to ensure a feasible transition uh, to make sure that Mr. when Mr. Darch leaves, uh, that uh, this be a smooth process. I mean, we're looking for someone that's bilingual, of course, someone that's that fits with the municipality's needs, even though this individual is anglophone more than francophone, but is willing to learn the French language. We need to consider the best interests of the city of Clarence and Rockland, and we need someone who's able to motivate his or her team, someone who's innovative, that's not marred in the old way of thinking, old ways of thinking, someone who's able to properly manage, a true manager, a true project manager. That's what we need. Councillor Simonou, well, I'd like to bring a, a clarify something with regards to what you said previously. I believe that we headhunted for a director once in the past. Well, uh, Councillor Simonou, I was not dealing with our town council. Of course, look, I just live with the consequences. Well, could a headhunter be considered a contact person here in Rockland? Could we not make use of a contact person here in Rockland as a headhunter? Is that not the same thing? Well, it's uh, similar to that, but this individual has specialized knowledge. Yeah, to come up with a we need to come up with a proper engineer. Well, headhunters specialize in municipal senior employees. There's something we might look at, but we'll bring back a recommendation to this effect in any event. Councillor Grima, could be a, one last comment on my part. It will behoove us and Mrs. Chalabois. Uh, we need a diploma. We, uh, need to take a look at the individual's character. We dealt with the leadership and influence. We know what we wish, and we have to be competitive with other municipalities that offer a certain type of salary. Otherwise, the equation is quite simple. We won't necessarily come up with the best candidate. I agree that uh, it's uh, quite nice to concentrate on uh, someone who is a diploma, uh, the holder of a diploma, but we need someone also who's a proper fit for our needs. Shall we determine at what level and what class this position is to be pegged at? I believe we're dealing with a level eight position here. Level eight, I see. Level eight. Well, I believe that, you see, that's, well, do you want us to remove the following provision, to post the position locally and to uh, hire a headhunter or a recruiter? Yes. We also can rely on our website to do so. Well, you know, we can work 
in parallel with other recruiting methods that are at our disposal. We can easily post this on our website without this costing us all that much. And if we receive the information, we relay it to the headhunter that we'll hire to allow these this headhunter to perform what needs to be to to do what needs to be done. Well, we can obtain a candidate uh, for Moose job. Well, that's quite a ways from here. Mrs. Uh, Collier, you'd mentioned level eight, a level eight position. Are you uh, you're, you're alluding mostly to a class eight position, right? There 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 is not a level eight position within our hierarchy. We're we're dealing here with a class eight and not a level eight position. That's right. That's right. Do you know where we're what our wish is then, ma'am? You're, you're quite aware of what our wishes are? Yes. Fine. All right, then. Do you want me to read the, the resolution in you? No. All we need to do is to take a vote on this. So we're not going to post this locally. So the directive is this, to go ahead. and recruit a headhunter that will in turn recruit a feasible candidate. So, uh, and also to enter into a detailed revision of the salary that is to be paid out and to remove a condition a number two to it that it be posted locally, this is not a need. 2018 election changes to the municipal act that the committee of the whole recommends that the municipal council confirms that uh, electronic ballots will not be used in the municipal 2018 municipal elections and that the committee of the whole authorizes the clerk to prepare a bylaw to authorize an alternative method of voting being by telephone or internet voting for the 2018 municipal elections for councils to consideration and that council directs the clerk to initiate a proposal for the implementation of internet and telephone voting for the 2018 uh, election and that the committee of the whole recommends that municipal council that ranked ballots not be used. Oh, we're repeating ourselves here. So that ranked or written ballots not be used. I'm sorry. Seconded by Councillor Grimaud. Let's find any questions. Mr. Mayor. Uh, readily notice that when people are called upon to phone in or to make use of internet uh, facilities that the elderly have a hard time contending with this. Could we not set up polling stations? Yes, of course. At the at retirement homes, you know, where people, you know, that people can go up to, you know, floating polling stations. Look, we do have uh, venues already set up that allow people to go and vote there. You know, ranked ballots are those ballots that are removed. You know, those ranked ballots are those that refer to candidate one, two, or three. But we're mentioning here either by telephone or internet uh, facilities. What Mr. Ledon states is that he wants paper. He wants the option that paper be used also. You'll be able to attend a voting station that will help these people out vote through the internet. So there will be stations set up for that purpose? Yes, there were some even set up at the last, for that purpose at the last municipal election. We're not just talking about voting by phone or through internet from your home. I see. Mr. Mayor, if I might be allowed to add this here. You must vote or implement a method, and then I'll come back with the relevant procedures and details concerning that procedure that you shall have voted on and implemented. Is it that no, no one else has made use of this method and we're kind of nervous in implementing it right now? No, no, not at all. Because the city of Ottawa has also refused, refused. I know that the township of Russell has voted against this measure because this requires more intensive follow-up. This method, if it's implemented, requires more intensive follow-up. We need a fair method. Well, we don't have any electoral college here. That's too bad. 
Well, let's revisit that issue. Mrs. Collier? Well, Mr. Mayor, we understand that there could be a lot of debate on this report. I know this. We wanted to get it to you before the new year because our next meeting is not until the January the 23rd meeting. We can table it tonight. If you want more research to be performed on it, that's fine, and we can vote on it on the 23rd. Well, I'm fine on the principle, and I applaud the initiative of doing some work on this a long time before it is implemented because there's going to be some debate on this. We'll be do, doing away with ranked ballots then, and Mrs. Wimet will come up with an alternative means of uh, tackling this issue. I believe that uh, Mr. Lalonde wants to ensure that we include polling stations. This is a contingency that's included in paragraph number two to be a bit more transparent. So you'll come back to us with a report dealing with internet, phone, and polling station voting measures to be implemented. Yes? We've always taken means to facilitate people voting through internet means or through the use of the phone. It won't be as intense as the last time around where everyone had to show up at polling stations. I am seeking a directive from town council as to what town council wishes in this regard. And from that point on, I'll implement necessary procedures to put this into action. Well, given your comments, I'd like town council members to think that the voting through by way of the telephone is not a very good method because there are some individuals that have a hard time hearing and voting uh, telephone voting is not the best for those hearing impaired individuals that wish to cast their votes for example well I thought that the you know it's it's confusing mr. mayor I told you I raised that issue a long time ago and I in any event uh, look you know, it gives us a different option. All we're doing right now is that uh, we're doing away with ranked ballots, and we just want to come up with other possibilities to be considered in the future. In any event, we'll revisit this in January. I know, I know. But I don't want our town clerk's time wasted in looking at uh, measures that we're not interested in. If the majority states that we'd like to implement the phone method, that's fine. You know, well, it's very easy to phone uh, phone in your vote. In any event, in any event, we received a lot of details as to how the next elections are to be conducted. Okay then. The registration period has not been shortened uh, uh, for uh, by some 15 days. The 15th of November? No, it's the 15th of May instead of the 15th of oh, the 1st of January. I believe that the intent to put forward one's candidacy uh, remains the same date-wise. Uh, all they have to do is to decide to run for office. Uh, at the time in which it's propitious for one, decide to run for office. That's all. All right. Let's go on. The budget here to the next item. The budget status report as of November 30th, 2016. Councilor Skiho, Town Council, received the report of the budget status report uh, as of November 30th, 2016, seconded by Councilor Lalonde. Yes, Councilor Simono. Mr. Mayor, it's unfortunate that uh, the citizen that asked us some questions earlier on left the room in half and a puff. But if I take a look at item five, all expenditures, NCR Transit, 176000 to reduce ridership, $100,000 for salaries. You know, look, I appreciate Mr. Kehoe, your report. I do appreciate it. And you know, when I say something nice, there's always something behind it, but, but, let's not rejoice because we have many, many projects at 
present that are over budget that probably have not been accounted for at this point in time so you know let's not just go and spend that money and I know you're not going to do it because it's Christmas but you know I just wanted the other members of council to realize that the three hundred and twenty one thousand dollars may be whittled down to thirty thousand dollars or so because we're looking at the extras on Laurier streets and the extras everywhere major expenditures involved here Mr. Keo Mr. Mayor well I received subsequent information on Friday that uh, the UCPR well you see we always wait in the final quarter in December to get the final grant for daycare from the UCPR and they've confirmed the amount to us Mr. Mayor and it happens to be a hundred thousand greater than what I'd anticipated here so the good news is the hundred thousand dollar deficit for daycare looks like it's going to be coming in around and help us in the balanced budget it's going to add a hundred uh, further a hundred thousand dollars to it as council has mentioned the big reason why we have this surplus at this stage as you know and I've mentioned during the budget is that we didn't issue debt this year and it's largely the debt budget that's providing the surplus as I asked from council in the budget report any surplus available here is going to be used to pay down capital projects so that we won't have to borrow for those capital projects so we won't be setting any surpluses to reserves we'll be paying down capital projects but we'll be coming back to council in the new year to advise as to how much we'll be doing when we have a confirmed amount hopefully the amount of surplus no just more of a technical question when I read your graphic on schedule a it states surplus deficit surplus should be in bracket brackets all we have are minuses and plus numbers I don't know if everybody sees that so you see there are minuses and no pluses so it took me a long time to understand this set of figures so if it's surplus in brackets please put in brackets I'm very simple with numbers you know yes but it's not in brackets you see well there's a little minus sign well for me minus is minus you see well you see this might mean two different things maybe I'm the only one that had trouble deciphering this I always have a trouble dealing with uh, county documents when I see surplus in brackets I'll I can pinpoint those easily fine uh, minus oh, let's let's not get into a debate here concerning concerning negatives surpluses and brackets shall we please yes means no and no means yes come on now folks let's go back now to the meeting uh, any other questions fine thank you monthly reports let's go on to monthly reports yes any questions concerning monthly reports well I don't have any questions that apply directly to the monthly reports I do have one go ahead the councilor Giddy Ma uh, let's revisit the taxes that have yet to be collected perceived I don't want to harp on this again but I believe that we've hired someone who has recently been trained in collecting uncollected taxes up to now now for the past nine eight or nine months that he's been working for us in the past three years we've had an increase of course of unpaid taxes again in one uh, during the past one two or three year time period or period we're talking about 2.6 million dollars worth of unpaid taxes yet now can we have an idea Mr. Keogh as to when a concrete plan will be implemented to lower those amounts as much as possible and can you come back to us with an action plan to implement for those who are in arrear in their taxes for three years and over Mr. Mayor will come up with a report addressing that question on as of the 23rd of January. We'll come up with a report with regards to all tax accounts and how we can go about properly managing those accounts. Yes, Councillor Delonde, those amounts 
appearing on page 138 exclude interest costs, do they not? Or interest-related amounts that are alluded to? The R3 chart. Well, that chart is not numbered, I believe. That excludes interest. That's chart number three. Does not include interest. That's the that only relates to that amount of interest. Well, the interests are pegged at fifteen percent, I believe. Yes. Well, after three years, they're pegged at forty-five percent. Helen, I'll speak in English because I'm going to direct a question to you, but I don't know if it should go to Mr. Darch or Mr. Boucher. But last week, I was touring in Mr. Uh, Grimard's uh, ward, and then I came along to that point where the ward splits on this side where it's Mr. Grimard's, and on that side it's mine. But, you know, they're repairing water service leading to the park right now. And it reminded me a lot, this being said, of Bouvier Road and what happened there. Because when I looked it down the hole, there there was this big water main smack dab in the middle of the street and it had a main stop, which was supposed to have when you have a service, a water service, and it had about a meter's worth of pipe attached to it and then a curb stop with no stem. And then no pipe for three feet distance further to that and then the pipe started up again and ran right up to the stand post now the stand post when you open it had no water coming out of it so you know we had to well the city paid for the repairs now i want to know at the next meet the council meeting the following i want to know who did that was it the city of Clarence in Rockland did we hire a contractor but we need a reply as to that we're not a laughing stock here no contractor should ever do that or no city employee should ever be called upon to do that please tell me who's responsible for this if it's a contractor we'll sue him in court to pay for the repairs if it's a city employee we'll discipline him or her but definitely this cannot be approved that's all I have to say I just to I just like to applaud his comments. <laughs> oh well thank you. Any other questions then? With regards to taxi arrears, uh, one question, Mr. Kehoe. Those four graphs that appear on paper that are before us. Three years and more, you're talking about six hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars worth of unpaid taxes. If I add all of those amounts were uh, come up with a 4.5 million total amount of taxes in arrears, 4.5 million dollars. If I add all of the back taxes owed, three years and on, Mr. Levin, did we hire a company, Pierre, to determine what was going on with the Jean-Marc Lalonde arena? And was the report, I know that we were told that the report was going to be issued in January as to what was going to be done with the arena. Is it on track? Yes, the report will be forwarded to council uh, to give you proper guidance as to what is done concerning this issue. We're not just dealing with a couple of buildings here, but with the complex as a whole. And this report should be forwarded to you during the course of the first quarter of next year, or 2017. Other questions? Uh, before calling an adjourned, I'd like to wish all residents of Clarence and Rockland, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to mention something. I believe that Mrs. Wallet handed us uh, 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 information as to summer employment uh, uh, opportunities and I would like that this summer employment opportunities these opportunities be posted on the uh, city of Clarence and Rockland's uh, internet uh, site do we need to vote on this no it's just a matter of adding a link onto our website leading on to potential uh, 
summer job opportunities. I would like to wish a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to all residents. I wish a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to all those tuning in and all the best in the coming new year from all members of Town Council here at Clanton Rockland. Thank you then. Adjournment called at 9.20 p.m. Thank you.